All right, people. Lisa wants a receptacle added on the wall or outlet, if you don't know what a receptacle is. And we have a mobile home. It's actually considered a hybrid, whatever. It just means it has actual uh, windows and walls like a house, but it's still a mobile home. And so this is something you have to do in a mobile home because you don't always have all the outlets you need when you get one. So you have to know how to add one. So that's what we're doing on the lighting. Uh, I'm gonna show you everything it's gonna take to put it in, tie it into the breaker, put it into the wall. It's pretty simple. I think you guys will be impressed how easy it's gonna be for y'all to do. Um, and it's really a thing that someone who's never done it before can do it and do it successfully. All right, guys. So on your wiring, if you can do a single outlet, uh, 14, two with ground is all you need. That's gonna be more than enough to run, you know, I would say five to uh, 10 amps on. Um, I have 50 foot to go, but I have 10 foot up, 10 foot down. And you think of waste and different things. So you need to at least get a hundred foot. I always buy like, anytime I make a bend, I add 10 foot. Cause it seems like with waste and everything, that's what you need. Smallest perk you can be able to get is can be one of these 15 amps, and that'll be fine because if it has a direct short, it's gonna pop it anyway. So don't worry about that, even though you know your circuit isn't gonna be for 15 amps, you're not gonna be running that much. That's just gonna be the smallest you're gonna be able to buy at Home Depot or anywhere. For your wall, you're gonna to wanna to get one of these that has the ears on it like this. This is a single, you can buy them shallow or regular. This is just a regular size. If you have an older mobile home, you're gonna to wanna to get a shallow one because uh, the walls aren't as deep. Uh, but see, that little wing right there is what's gonna press it up against the wall and hold it in place. You don't have to nail it to a stud. Uh, so that's very important. Uh, the name of it, that's what it is. And they're not very expensive. Uh, this whole project's only gonna cost like 50 or $60. So I'll show you the ticket at the end. And this will work on half inch or three inch uh, thick sheetrock. All right, here are our supplies. We're at 5429. And like I said, the wire needs to be 14.2 with ground for one outlet. The box with the ears, like we need. The receptacle, don't go cheap. Buy a nice one. Um, and this one has the safety feature that closes off the hot side. An oversized wall plate, in case we make any errors, that'll cover. And a breaker that will fit your breaker box. And this is a home line breaker. What she wants to do is get you a tape measure and use something as a guide. I'm gonna use the front door and I know that where I wanna put the receptacle is seven feet from the edge of the front door, so. So that puts it somewhere in this area right here. So what you want to do is you want to start removing all your vinyl side. And all you really have to do to do it is uh, you want to push down on a little bit and lift up and find your spot where it joins together at. And once you start pulling it apart, it all starts coming apart. So here, let's start right here because this is a joint piece. See how I lift down and then I can pull. want to get it loose and the stuff's in really long runs you might have to go five and six foot down that'll be good you just want to get it loose on there like that everything loose and you want to pull your skirt now just lay it out to the side so all to do that is you lift up on the white part and sometimes it'll be screwed in different spots so we'll just pull that back like that and I'm pretty sure it's somewhere in this area but we'll we'll find an exact hole later I'll show you how that right there. 
Just gotta get everything loosened up like that. That's the first step. So what we're gonna do now is figure out how big to cut the hole for the box to go into the wall. That's gonna be the next step. And uh, what you wanna do is get your box, kind of marked where I needed to put this one. So you wanna stick it on the wall like that and you just want to mark around it. So it's on the wall backwards and you want to mark around it like this. And don't mark the ears because the ears are what are going to be on the outside of the sheetrock. Once you, you get your tracing on there, you want to straighten your lines up. Mine a little off, so I'm just going to straighten them up a little bit. And cross them over so they all connect. I'm just using a little piece of cardboard I cut off an of Amazon box. And I'll connect them all across, just like that. Now, uh, now I see where I cut. You can cut this out with a sheetrock um, knife. You can use a butter knife. You can use whatever you want. I use an oscillating tool just because I have one. And that's what we're going to use now. The other thing you want to do is you want to take like a towel and lay on the floor in front of it because that sheetrock dust is just gonna go everywhere and that'll just help clean up better. Start your oscillating tool if you have one, kinda at an angle like this, then go in. And the other thing you wanna make sure before you even do this, that this box does not need to be on a stud. It needs to be in between studs. It needs to be held up by the sheetrock. You see our studs right there, no stud there, stud there. So, yeah. So we want to make sure it goes somewhere where there's no stud. Perfect. And that's how you can kind of tell. You hear the difference? Hollow. Not hollow. The, not, the stud will sound very, basically not hollow. That's the best way of putting it. It's just solid. All right, so you can start with your oscillating tool. Now you know that you're in a hollow area on the wall. Start at an angle. So you see how I nicked that little part of the wall? That is why I get a oversized plate. Because it's just impossible to be perfect. There you are. Nice, tight, snug fit. But before I do that, I need to go in here. I need to push this installation out the way. Just like that. Okay. Get you a nice little hole in it. Now... This is listed as a um, a a hybrid or um, modular home, and so you're gonna have regular sheetrock, you're gonna have your insulation, you're gonna have uh, OSB or plywood wrap, and then you're gonna have your outside, which is normally either gonna it's normally gonna be vinyl siding. Uh, some do have stucco, and so I have to drill into the OSB to make my hole to bring my wire in. Um, so what you want to do is when you drill that hole, you don't want to go too, too quick because you don't want to push through and hit that vinyl siding. We, we push the vinyl siding up outside already. So that way, if it does get hit, it'll lift up a little bit. It won't hopefully poke a hole in it. What I used to do that with 
if you don't have a modular or hybrid or a, a manufactured house, if you have a mobile home, just a regular mobile home, and it has the tin outside, you won't have an OSB wrap. Most of those will just be sheetrock, insulation, metal. And so it's a little easier because once you get through the sheetrock and you pull the insulation back, you could just run the wire down the metal. So what this is is a half inch um, hole saw. Uh, I don't know what kind of drill bit they call this, a wood drill bit or whatever. It just makes a half inch hole. And you just want to kind of put it right there on that wood, as you can see the OSB. And you just want to kind of go slow with it. And as you feel you're going through it and you're almost through it, go slower so that way you don't hit your vinyl siding. Just like that. Let's go to the outside and take a look. All right, here's the hole. And as you can see how high it is, that your mobile home flooring doesn't really start to right here. You know, it starts on this first one. And so even though it's close to the ground in there, it's actually high up out here, as you see. And so we didn't scar or damage our, our vinyl side, and we did really well. Came right through. We can put a wire through there and be good to go. All right, we're gonna now put the wire into the hole that we created to bring it inside the house. So what you wanna do is you wanna come up through the bottom. Yeah, it's right there. You wanna come up through the bottom of this one here. So. It'll have space in between there. You're just gonna have to work, work it through there. There you go. Here we go. Got it now. So once you get it, then you can just keep working it up through the vinyl siding. Because there's actually when you look at it, there's gaps. And I'll show you guys a closer up. And it's really important to use the outdoor wiring because there's indoor and outdoor. The dark color, the silver color, I mean gray color is for outdoor. It's made to get, it can get wet, it's waterproof. And so I'm gonna shove through about three foot. That way I just make sure I have plenty on the other side. Just shove it in the hole. Just like that. Let's take a look. As you can see how I've just gone through the top of it. Let's we'll start down here. So you can see down here. Gone through that one. Gone up here. Through that one. It takes a minute to work it through, of course. 
not easy but it's done and we'll actually seal that in with some sealant so that way it'll be watertight and the rest of this we'll just take it and put it underneath my bowl all right so the next thing we're going to do is go to the inside and finish out the inside so we have our box here we have a receptacle and this receptacle is the one that has the safety feature on it that shuts off the um the hot side so that's important to have especially if you have children that'll keep them from sticking things in it but i guess if they really tried they could and your oversized plate so what you want to do is first is your first you want to deal with your box and so this looks like it's just coming straight out the middle so i'll go through the top on the box and what you want to do is you just you just want to press it down just take it tap it press it down okay and then you want to take your wire you just want to push it through there you don't want to knock it out because you want to be able to leave it closed off Once you start pulling on it, it'll come smoother. It's just at first, it's gonna be a little tough to get it through there. There we go. Okay. Then we'll make sure our ears are folded down. They're in the correct spot. And you want to push your box into your wall. Just like that. And then you want to start tidying up. Years. I don't use a drill because I find that using a drill you can over tighten. Push it flat to the wall. And just keep tightening it down until it feels nice and snug. You don't have to power cinch it in. You just need to get it snug. All right. So what you want to do is you only need about eight inches. That's all you need. Throw the rest of that wire away. Recycle it, whatever you want to do with it. easiest thing for you to do is take a razor blade and just slide down it right through the middle because that's where the ground is going to be and you don't want to go to one side because you don't want to nick one of the neutral or hots and so this wire is really coated because it's it's made for outdoor and Once you got them separated, you're just gonna pull on them a little bit. And you will pull it ground out. Just like that. Take your blade, go around it. So your white is going to be your neutral, your ground, your ground is going to be the bare wire, and your load is going to be your black, or hot, or whatever you want to call it. back about not the inch all you need so when you're looking at your receptacle 
this side right here is your neutral. This side here is your hot. Then your ground is the green screw day here at the bottom. Uh, some of them, you, you push them through the back. This one's a nicer one. And so you're gonna have to kind of put a little bend in your, in your wire, make it like a little hook out of it. It doesn't matter if you put it on the top or bottom. They're, they're all hooked together. So you just kind of hook it on there and you just tighten down. Well, let me do it the other way so that way it's going the same way that my wire is tightening. Yeah, because the other way, when you tighten down the other way, it's going the, the same way you're turning, and so that way it undoes it. If you, if you go this way, then you're actually going with the same way you're tightening, and it tightens on there for you. It just does a better job. There we go. And this is something that'll save you just tons of money, so that way you ain't paying for it. So, the black, or hot, or load, whatever you want to call it. Going the same way we're turning. There we go. And I'm just bending that top down so it has a nice Gets in there really nice and snug. Perfect, perfect. So you ground, come around here on your ground, and the easiest thing for you to do is to grab your pliers, grab the very end of it like that, and just wrap it around there. It's nice and tight. And there's no perfect way of doing it. As long as you get it on there and you have the wire coated where it should be coated and and everything's nice and tight it's not loose if the if the lugs are loose you don't have to super tighten them but it needs to be better than hand tighten you know it needs to be on there nice and tight kind of fold everything into it and um and then just put in the wall and we're almost done if they're too loose what will happen is is it'll it'll burn out your your wall outlet your receptacle because it'll sit there and arc because it's not making really really good uh, contact it's just kind of in there loose and i've seen a many of them burn up over it just tighten it down the less wire you have to push inside the box the better because then it makes it easier to put in the receptacle. So now, what we want to do is just put our plate on because we're, we're done. That's done. We'll finish out this inside. And I actually cut that one good enough that I wouldn't have to have an oversized plate. But you know, you never know. This just needs to be hand tight. Just like that. All right, we're gonna close all this back up, except for the uh, skirting at the bottom, because uh, we need that to see to run the wire. I use uh, this to, to seal up the hole. It's a type of um, 
I don't know, silicone or whatever it is. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but it's amazing. It, it, it sticks to just about anything. It works really well. So the hole here, we'll just fill the hole up. More the merrier. Get around there, get it real good. All right. And so you always start at the top and work your way down. So basically what you want to do is at the, we're at the seam, you just want to, you just want to tap it down like that. So what I'm doing when I hit it, I'm hitting and pushing down like this. I'm going to hit it with that motion. Piece or two may stay flared back for a little bit, but Sometimes you have to bend it down, that bottom lip to your hand, so you can get it. Oh, what a mess. I almost got it. Keep working it. Looking good, looking good. This piece back. You just want to put it in, push it up.
make sure it's all snapped together. You don't want any leaks. And some spots that you pulled from will be kind of flared out, but they'll lay back down. All right, now we're gonna run the wire. All right, so once you get your wire around underneath the house, you're gonna to wanna to go inside your breaker box. Hopefully you'll have one of these extra auxiliary um, lines that do go straight into the breaker box. If you don't, you're gonna to have to go up beside it. It's much, much more difficult. Just luckily we have this one. So all you gotta do is just go inside of it like that. Okay, that's good right there. And you'll pull your extra through the breaker box and then you can cut off the excess there. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and take the breaker panel apart. This usually takes a screwdriver. I'll always take the last two bolts at the top out last, so that way it doesn't swing over and hit the wall or anything. Just be careful when you're doing this. Remember, that is a lot of amperage, 200 amps coming into this thing. Kind of put pressure on the box, hold it to the wall while you take the last one off. If you have a hard time doing it, get somebody to help you. Open the door, lift up and pull out. All right, the wire should be coming in right here. And that's the one I used last time. Let's see where it's at. Okay, so it hasn't come through yet. Let me go outside and push it up. Let's see if we have it. No, I can feel it, it's right there. Okay, one more good push. There he is. You want to be careful when you're pushing it through that you're not hitting, you know, any of the lugs where it's going to be hot. So that's why you want to push it in slowly. Pull all the excess out. Okay. Feed some back down because you want a little slack in it where it's not pulled too, too tight. Good. What we'll do is we'll cut, cut it long. Now you want to figure out where you're going to put your breaker at. This guy is going to go right here, right beside this other one I did. And so you want to kind of 
You can obviously see how much room you need. And sometimes it helps running them on the back side of the wire. Just be real, real careful. All that's hot in there. There you go. Now you're, now the front panel will shut better. You got to think about things like that. Okay. Now, since I pushed wire oh, back yes, down there. Yes. All right. So, if you did cut a little too short when you went to cut it, it's okay. Remember, you can pull wire um, back through because you have extra now. Go to the middle, kind of make a little cut. And what that'll let you do is start to separate. You should be able to pull it and separate it. All right. Take your razor blade. Well, I don't have that one on me. I left it in another room. You can also use your, your cutters. Just kind of twirl them around like that. There you are. There's your black. Go ahead and clear them all out. There's your white. You do not have to remove a lot of that heavy insulation. As long as you know which colors are which, you know. Now, and you want to separate it on down because they're all going to go different spots. Okay, and if you need to feed some back through, there you are, feed it back through. Just be real careful where you're at. I'm going to show you guys something. In the breaker box, this is where the neutral goes. Right here on this bar. Okay. The black, which is the load or hot, is going to go on your breaker. Okay. And your ground, do you see your ground lug down there? Let's see. See, there's a ground bar right behind there. See all the ground wires? They're going down, they're going down. They're going down to that little bar right over there. Kind of have the shadow on it. Right there, and that's where it's going to tie into is on there. You, you can see them right there, it'll tie into that. And each one has a different purpose. And the neutral ground need to be separated, they do not need to be tied together. Let me repeat that on some older houses, you don't have a choice, but you could run another ground and create a separate ground to neutral. And what that allows you to do when you have a separate neutral from ground is whenever the breaker trips, it'll trip a lot faster because they can recognize a short easier. The thing's tied in together, it can't tell where stuff's running. And that's where you have like older homes burning down because uh, of electrical fire. You don't have that kind of problem in newer homes. Tie that in there, make it nice and tight. Push it in there. Get everything behind your main wires. You're hot, we're gonna tie in last. I need to shorten that just a little bit. You only want about an inch showing. We're gonna go down here, tie in our ground. That's gonna be the next one. Find an open slot. If you cannot find an open slot, you can use one that's with another. I don't suggest that, but sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you don't have this much room on panels. I'm just very fortunate. This panel has a lot of space left. Just remember electricity is nothing to be afraid of if you know what you're doing with it. And you respect it. What I'm doing is I'm holding it in place with one finger while I'm tightening it with the other hand.
All right. So right here on your on your breaker, you're gonna loosen it up. Put your wire in there. Tighten it back up. Put your breaker in the off position, which that's on, that's off. Put your breaker in the off position, put it in, put it in on your hanger right there. All that's hot, so be very, very careful. Sit it real good in there, then just push in. And that is it to it. That is properly installed. Now we can get our panel. We gotta make a little bit of adjustments because now the number 11 slot is taken up. So we got to take this and we have to break that one off. Just simply move it back and forth and fatigue the metal and it'll pop right off. Now you can reinstall your There we are. So start with your top two, because they're the easiest to get in. Make sure to leave one hand on it at all times. That way you hold nice pressure to it. And you wanna leave your hand on the actual white panel and not on the wall, because you've been hot and dirty. And if you touch the wall, you're gonna mark it. You can put a dirt spot on it. bottom we do the other side You don't want them super tight, just a little better than tight. All right. All we have to do is turn it on. It's important to check your work. I use one of these little plug adapters. It'll tell me if the polarity is correct or if I have something not hooked up right or if the ground's missing, anything like it. And if you see, that will read to us the two yellows are correct. No red. Very good. I appreciate you guys subscribing, like, share my videos. I appreciate everyone who follows the channel. Thank you so much.